to you. I'm Hayley Palmer. It's so good to have your company with me on a Wednesday night, especially as we are joined by Scouting for Girls, Roy Stride. And here is what happened when I caught up with him. Roy, it's great to have you on the show. How are you? I am good. Thank you for having me. Well, having me, I am at home. So I'm I'm glad to be on the show. I just wish I was out of the studio because I feel I've spent a long time here. Yeah, and I mean, what have you been up to? Obviously, lockdowns happen. We're kind of coming out of lockdown. Is it right that you've been taking flying lessons? <laughs> yeah, that is true. Uh, how did you find out about that? Uh, oh. I have. Yeah, I have. I started. I started last summer when I thought it was going to be the end of the world, and I started doing some bucket list things. And one of the things I've always wanted to do was learn to fly. So I've started flying lessons. They've been quite slow because. Uh, right. Firstly, there's been different lockdowns, and secondly, I didn't realise how quite how expensive it was. Yeah. And thirdly, I haven't done any gigs to earn any money, so uh, <laughs> so I probably I might be geriatric when I can actually fly solo. But they they're going well, thanks. Well, good on you for having the bucket list. I like that. Well, we're going to go into uh, the first song, my favourite. She's so lovely. Is it right this took you two years to kind of tweak this song and get it out there? Uh, possibly even longer than that. It started wow. life about 2014, and it came out in 2017. So, uh, yeah, it was a it was a long one. It had different lyrics. It had different arrangements. It was it was quite lucky in the old school way. We we really honed it over two years of gigging and made it made it into like a really tight song. So there was no. There's no gristle on it. It's all it's all melody and tune and funny lyrics. So, yeah, it did take a long time, but it was worth it. It absolutely was. And it's been used in a lot of commercials, TV shows. Gavin and Stacey, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that was that was really amazing because I was actually watching that episode and didn't <laughs> even realize that we were I don't know who okayed it, but uh, I I wasn't I didn't and uh I I obviously I would have but I watched it and suddenly it was there and it was it was amazing and also in Angus Thongs and Perfect Snogging uh which it gets referenced a lot it, they play the whole song at the beginning of that film and so Lots of people always mention that to me. Yeah, well, it's a great song. We're going to play it out now on the show. And number seven in 2007 and remained in the top ten for six consecutive weeks. Here it is. It's She's So Lovely. Now, Roy, we have some questions from some of our lovely viewers. Uh, Donna and Marcus Silva. Hi, guys. They would like to know, how are you inspired to write songs? I, I get... I don't get inspired. Nothing like hits me and go, I need to write a song about it. Like I kind of, as my real, I say my real job is a songwriter. So I sit down every day and write a song and I literally, I'm sort of searching for things to write about because I do it every day. So, you know, I spend any time, any, I hear anything or see anything like hear something on TV or read something in a book I'll take that and like I've got this big long list of concepts of titles right. and choose one of them at random. So it's rare that something hits me and I go, I've got to write that song. Right. OK. Just write every day. There we go, Donna and Marcus. And uh, Alice would like to know, uh, is it true you once sold Martin Kemp a phone when you worked in car phone <laughs> warehouse? And I want to know that. Too. Yes. Uh, yes, that's true. Hey! And we have. It was, I worked at Carphone Warehouse and what was even worse was, well, I, it's not, basically in the old days, you had to take a photocopy of a piece of their ID. So I had, <laughs> I had a photocopy of his driver's license. I forgot license. that. You did. Yeah. And I scribbled out any of the details and then I said, I took it back to him and said, could you sign that? And I got him to sign it for Pete, our drummer, who is a massive, uh, Spandar and 80s fan, as yeah. we all are. And I gave it to him as a Christmas present. And then like 15 years later, after that, we supported them, I think, somewhere. And so, yeah, he, he's, it was, uh, yeah. <laughs> that, Iconic story. story there. Like it. Brilliant. Yeah. And Dan uh, would like to know, what's the funniest thing that has ever happened on stage or on tour? The funniest thing that's happened, I've done lots of stupid things. I <laughs> <laughs> this is like what time does this show Good go question, out? Dan. Yeah, what time? What time does this show it's go a out? Family show. Okay, right. Okay, yeah, family I, show. I will go for. Uh, I split my. 
the, I didn't find this funny, but the rest <laughs> of the band did. I split my trousers from the very top all the way down to the bottom <laughs> at a gig at an arena full of girl guides. Whilst, whilst, whilst going up to a, a high riser and fortunately nobody saw it. And my guitar tech came in with gaffer tape and gaffer taped it all up. Uh, but that was that's probably the the worst wow. funny thing that's ever okay. happened. Okay, well, thank you for your question, Dan. I hope that answered that. Moving swiftly on, we're going to go into dancing in the daylight. Now, this makes me smile from start to finish. Yeah. Uh, Rebecca says, "Is this filmed in Angel as she used to take her lunch break by the canal there?" Yes, it was filmed mainly around there. It was a, it was actually one of the. <laughs> We are, we appear, this is what you can do. This is the game you play. We did this video because we got kind of bored of being in our own videos and we just wanted some people dancing <laughs> with it. But they, we appear. They're amazing dancers. They are, they're, it's such a fun video. But we appear, each of us appear, me, Greg and Pete, once in the video. It's like a cameo shot. So see if you can spot us. Oh, okay. Are we ready at home? Go. <laughs> Now, I like the sound of this. Your album, Easy Covers, which is a mix of 80s covers and original inspired tracks. Uh, this sounds right on my street. Tell me more. <laughs> well, yeah, it started out... So, uh, I don't want to burst any bubbles, but it started out as a bit of a joke. Uh, oh. <laughs> on a tour bus, like, years ago. We were coming back from Germany, and it was the end of a tour, and we were very drunk <laughs> singing karaoke songs to 80s songs yeah Standard. exactly <laughs> and uh we were singing phil collins i actually have <laughs> on vinyl phil collins serious hits live here hey! and uh we were singing along to that and somebody said as a joke you should do an album of 80s songs and call it easy cover as in a play on words of easy lover which at four in the mornings felt like the funniest thing that anybody had ever said <laughs> And then we, Genius. Yeah, we, we woke up and thought, actually, that's a terrible idea. And it went, it, we never thought of it again until that first lockdown happened. And suddenly I had, you know, this is, this studio is near my, it's next to my house. I had, ba I was supposed to be recording another band. They, they obviously couldn't come down because of lockdown. So I, <laughs> I didn't have any songs because we just released an album, uh, called The Trouble with Boys. Uh, and, uh instead i just started recording 80s songs just out of boredom and we love the 80s yeah. you can't go wrong i love the 80s i love the 80s oh, love it yeah yeah well it's uh absolutely brilliant and what is your favorite track which is the one that we really need to look out for the, uh, the, there are two songs on there which you should look out for the best one is our cover of everybody wants to rule the world which is track number one which is probably is, is a really really good version i i am really proud of how good that sounds the other one you have to listen to is easy lover which is a terrible version on the album <laughs> and the only reason it's on the album is because we called the album easy cover <laughs> it's a really bad version Got of it. easy lover we did another one <laughs> we've done like a little r remix album of a with a much better version but uh it's worth checking that out just to see how bad it is. OK, well, we're definitely checking that one out. And so we're going to put details on the screen below um, of how you can get hold of that album. And also your tour, um, yeah. your UK and Ireland 2021 tour. Is that still happening in October? Do we know yet what's going on? It, to be honest, if it doesn't happen, I'm probably going to have to start driving taxis because we haven't oh. had a gig for such a long time. No, yeah. it's all, it is all going ahead. We've, In fact, I think we're doing about... 40 dates of which I think 11 have already sold out so uh Brilliant. I, like we can't wait we can't wait I think you know we <laughs> I, I have never looked forward to a set of dates more yeah. in my whole life it's going to be so fun it's going to be uh you know we're playing all our big songs some 80s classics and hey. just trying to make a massive party to try and make people feel you know try and cheer people up after a ridiculously rubbish it's, 18 months. Exactly. And I've seen clips of when people come to your tours and it literally is that party atmosphere, isn't it? What's it like when everyone is just literally singing your songs full blast? It's amazing. It really is. It's, <laughs> it, it's like an undescribable feeling. It's the, it's the reason why we do it. It's... Yeah. To, to see... To, like, 
to bring happiness to people through music you've written is like it's such a it, it's like, a gift. I feel very yeah. lucky I don't know about a gift but I yeah. feel very lucky that we get to do it because I, I'm also yes. having the best time ever it's yes. like I'm not and getting we paid win. for it and <laughs> and after the show there's like a whole load of free beer I get to drink as well it's like it's <laughs> Great yeah. success. All about that. <laughs> yeah, we like that. Exactly. We're exactly. going to go into uh, your video, Grown Up. Uh, watch the video to this. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, was this a lot of fun to make this video? It, it uh, kind of. It was okay. <laughs> I, I, I love the video. I think it's really good. It wasn't that much fun because you see, we do actually play a part where we're busking at the yeah. end in uh, Carnaby Street. What you don't realise is that was the hottest day of the year. And all you want to do on a music video is look cool. That's all you want to do. If you're in a band, you just want to look cool in a music video. You don't care about anything else. And it was like 40, like it's almost, I think it was like 34 degrees. And so we're just sweating, trying to play, <laughs> trying not to look absolutely awful. So, uh, so, but I do love, I think it was one of, it's one of my favourite videos we've done. And you know, it was it was the last album we did before lockdown happened, and yeah. I, I really love this. I wrote this song with James Blunt, actually. So, oh, did uh, you? Yeah. So it's it means a lot to me this tune, and I'm like, a massive fan of James Blunt, and it was yeah. a really fun writing session. Yeah, yeah, I bet. Well, we are going to check out the video right now, and we will see you after this. We grew up in the countryside. Feels like another. So just Rewinding back how everything started, is it right that you met Pete at Club Scouts and Greg at school? Yeah, yeah. Pete, when I was probably six years old and Greg on the uh, first day of school at secondary school when I was 11. So, yeah, we've got, we go back. We I think now we've almost been in a band as long since we started it to where we were friends. So we, we, we were friends God. for like... 10 years before we were in a band. So we, I, I tell you what, I've, do, I, I've, we're very lucky that way because so yeah. many bands having, you know, as a producer and a songwriter now, so many bands hate each other, <laughs> have really <laughs> wind each other up. Really and we're do. very, yeah. yeah. And we're so lucky that we, we, well, I'd, I'd say we get on really well. They, maybe they tolerate me. They know me long enough, so, yeah. But I think that uh, is the magic, isn't it? You know, you guys do really get on and you're having fun. And I think us as viewers, we can really see that when we're watching you. And I think that's what it's all about. Hopefully. That is exactly what Scouting for Girls is about. That's what our live shows are about. It's what we are as people. It's like, it's like the, like it or not like it, the music and the, the whole band is a reflection of us as people. So, uh yeah, it really does come across. Yeah, it really does. Okay. But what was that light bulb moment for you when you were like, I want to get into the music industry. That is exactly what I want to do. Because I love asking that question. It was. The actual moment was when I was with Greg, the bass player, and we went to our, well, my first ever gig, which was at the Watford Coliseum, which was a venue near us hey. in northwest London. And we went to see Suede play. And we were like, I, I love Britpop, Blur, Oasis. I was a teenager when that all happened and when I went to the first gig because I thought we we're all going to be sat down on seats like at a theatre and when everybody was like you know drinking beer in a mosh pit at 15 years old it was it changed it like it changed everything for me and I I came out of that and was like I want to make music for a living I want to tour and gig and do the, you know have that amazing amazing effect where you can move people like that on stage and and yeah. and only 12 years later, after that moment, <laughs> we made it happen. It took a long time. And if I'm just reading here, you've sold over 2 million records with four singles and four albums reaching the UK top 10 and have racked up four Brit Award nominations and an Ivan Novello nomination. Yeah. I mean, that is something to be really proud of, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it, it really is. Because also we, we didn't know anybody in the music business. We didn't know how to do it. And I think one of our proudest achievements was getting to that point where you have a record label. And cause a lot of yeah. that happened, you know, all those nominations and things happened after we'd signed to, to Sony records. And then you suddenly you get a whole team pushing your music and creating videos and getting you on TV and radio. 
I think the 12 years it took from that suede gig to uh, to that point of signing the deal is something that I'm probably most proud of because it was just the three of us there. And when, when, you're, yeah. when you're 16, 17 and you you want to be in a band and you're getting your mates come to gigs, it's really cool. <laughs> but when you're like 25 and some of your mates have like, you know, earning 50 grand a year and have houses and children and you're still living at home, believing you're going to be a, a musician or a rock star, it's not quite as cool. And the fact we kind of persevered and carried on with that is like a, I don't know, it's probably one of the, the, the most the thing I'm most proud of, the fact we did it together as friends. Yeah, that's really a good advice, actually, for anyone watching. You know, you've got to keep persevering in the industry. It's, it's not easy, is it, behind the scenes? So uh, that's something to really take on board. But we're going to go into uh, your song, This Ain't a Love Song. Am I right in saying that no one thought it should be a single to begin with, yet it went on to being your first UK number one? I thought it should be a single. I did. I, I, I gave... <laughs> I gave a load of demos at that Brit Awards where we got nominated for three Brit Awards. I gave a bundle of demos to the guys, to Nick and Joe, who ran our label, Nick Raphael and Joe Charrington. And they listened to them and they were like, I don't think there's a single on here. And so I went back oh. and wrote a load of other songs. But the first song on those demos uh, it was a little bit of a ropey version. But the first song was This Ain't A Love Song. And uh it wasn't supposed to be a single and it, it, we put it out as kind of like a setup for the album. It wasn't, we didn't think it'd even chart. It was just like a, you know, it's like an introduction to where we're going next. And it went to number one. And so it was, you know, wow. amazing. And did you come up with the concept for the video? Because it's filmed at London City Airport, isn't it? Yeah, I think, I can't, you know, it's so long ago. I can't remember if how <laughs> how much we were involved. So usually you get, given loads of treatments and which ones you liked. And we did feel it was a departure right. from like the fun songs like Elvis Ain't Dead and Heartbeat. We wanted to do something which is more cinematic and something a bit more, you know, a bit more real and sort of that reflected, you know, quite a sad song, really. And we thought the airport with people, yeah. you get every emotion at the airport. And so, and I feel that there's every emotion in This Ain't A Love Song as well. So uh, it, yeah. Worked really well, and I love uh, as I love aircraft, so it was like a it was, it was a double win for me. Although I didn't get to fly anything. Oh well, here it is. Uh, this ain't a love song, uh, Scouting the Girls, which was number one, baby, in two thousand and ten. Now, I want to hear all about this story, Roy, because is it right you guys gate crashed one of your fans' weddings and gave them a first arm? So how did this all come about? Because that's pretty hard to organise, right? It, it was quite hard to organise, but <laughs> it, in some ways it was quite easy. We, we were trying to work out the video. for the, So the first song from Easy Cover was Everybody Wants to Rule the World. And the second single we released was our version of Whitney Houston's I Want to Dance with Somebody. And I penciled in a day to do a video shoot. And that was all I had. I hadn't got anything else. I hadn't worked out who was going to direct it, film it, what the right. concept was going to be. And at the same time, I got a message through from uh, a guy called Ash, who has been a fan for a long, long time. And he sent me a message saying, uh, guys, we're getting married in a couple of weeks time. It's a lockdown wedding. Uh, I was just wondering, like... We, you are our favourite band. I was just wondering if you could do us a video message or maybe send us something signed because I know my wife would love it and I just want to do something Aww. special for her because she's having a lockdown wedding. We can't even have a first dance. And so I, I replied back. I said, Ash, just out of interest, when is your wedding? And he replied on the day that we I penciled him for a video shoot. Wow. And suddenly I was like, yeah, I was like, this is, I really believe in those sort of things when... Mm, events oh, yeah. come together and so that started off a chain of messages which you can see in the video because we've actually put these messages in the beginning of the video where yeah we we surprised we surprised her and gave her a lockdown wedding and that's essentially what the video is about so it, it was it yeah. was so lovely to do it it was uh -huh. you know it was really like they were just lovely and we all had champagne <laughs> after and uh yeah it was just, the only thing is we had to drive home otherwise we'd have stayed there and <laughs> Oh, yeah. well, I think it it's really just good. wonderful. It had me in tears when I was watching this for the first time. Oh, I'm so oh, sorry. Really? Uh, so check out the video to this. And I also love your version uh, of this as well. Uh, you're going to enjoy this. See you after.
somebody who loves me The clock strikes upon the hour And the sun begins to fade Still enough time to figure out How to chase my blues away I've done all right up to now It's the light of day that shows me how When the night falls Loneliness goes I wanna dance with somebody I wanna feel the heat with somebody I wanna dance with somebody With somebody who loves me I wanna dance with somebody I wanna feel the heat with somebody label and press team didn't think this song should even be on your album and you agreed but then producer Andy Green worked some magic is that right that, that is that is pretty much how I would describe what happened I remember <laughs> once I played at a gig and Sarah who was doing our press she goes I really don't think you should play that song anymore I really don't <laughs> like it and uh yeah it, it was a lot longer there were two extra sections uh, which we took out, well, Andy took out, and suddenly everybody loved it. Even when it went on the album, we never thought it would be a single. We knew Duh. It's Not About You would be one. She's So Lovely and Elvis yeah. Ain't Dead. But nobody thought Heartbeat was a single. But once it came out, it was, it, it like, it just became clear. It was the one everybody was coming back going, oh, I love Heartbeat. And so, yeah, yeah. we went with it. Yeah, and it was nominated uh, for Best British Single at the... 2009 Brit Awards as well so absolute result I didn't even know that so yeah I'm quite oh, quite I chuffed about that, right. that. <laughs> yeah no I think it, it could be I we got we got nominated for loads of Brits one year and didn't win any so I, can't, I kind of blanked it all out with the party afterwards so uh, you yeah, haven't won any was, yet Let, watch this face I like that thinking I like that thinking Absolutely. Well, we are going to play uh, Heartbeat out on the show now, but we want to remind everyone at home to get the album, Easy Covers, and the tour. It's still yes. going ahead. Yeah, definitely. The October tour is... 2021. So get involved. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, but it's been so lovely talking to you and hearing the car found uh, warehouse stories. Thank you. <laughs> stories from the past. Well, thank you for having us, uh, me. Uh, and uh, I, hopefully we can see some people out in October. I'm sure it's going to happen. Uh, October, yes. November. So, yeah, thank you. It's got to happen. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. It's Roy Strife for Scouting for Girls, everyone. Thank you. Oh, huge thank you, Roy Strife from Scouting the Girls for being a brilliant guest on tonight's show. We were loving it. And thank you to you at home for supporting the show. It really is very much appreciated. Thank you. Now, I will see you same time, same place next week. I'm going to leave you with some more Scouting the Girls and I will see you then. I can do just to be close to you Every time that we meet, I skip a heart.